Welcome to the Northbound Wealth Podcast. All opinions expressed by me, my co-hosts, or my guests are solely our own opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Northbound Wealth Management. This podcast is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended as personalized recommendations or fiduciary advice. It is not intended to provide and should not be relied upon for any investment, accounting, legal, and tax advice or as a solicitation to offer or buy any securities. Clients of Northbound Wealth Management may maintain positions in the securities discussed in this podcast. Hello, everyone. This is January 29th, 2024. This is Brent Foster and the Northbound Wealth Podcast, released weekly, Monday or Tuesday of every week, depending on holidays. It'll be uploaded to Apple, Spotify, YouTube, and a bunch of other places you listen. So stay tuned, subscribe, like, and uh, enjoy the show, guys. We got good shows for you every week, updating you on the markets, giving you some insights, uh, talking about technical analysis, and all kinds of different subject matter related to personal finance, how you can better yourself in this new year, how you can make improvements, uh, maybe learn something new that you didn't know before, uh, and implementing that in your personal lives, potentially. Um All right, let's dive in. Weekly market insights, excitement around big tech continues. So stocks continued their upward climb last week as excitement around big tech continued. Positive economic data stoked investors' belief that the Federal Reserve has pulled off a soft landing. We'll see. Whatever the hell soft landing means. Uh, Big Tech was back last week, pushing the Dow and the S&P 500 to new early highs uh, in the week as markets resumed their late fourth quarter rally. The so-called Magnificent Seven, comprising 28% of the S&P 500 index, resumed their pole position at the head of the pack as investors maintain their artificial intelligence, big subject, right? Everybody's talking about it's the coolest thing ever, related bullishness and rewarded widespread cost cutting at many tech giant firms. While the rally fizzled on Friday of last week, the the week's gains were slow but steady, and that's actually a good thing. The big economic news last week was better than expected economic growth and inflation news. Real gross domestic product, or GDP, grew at a 3.3% annualized clip in the fourth quarter of 2023, ahead of Wall Street's consensus expectations of 2%. The Personal Consumption Expenditures Index PCE was one of the Fed's most favored inflation gauges, showing core inflation, excluding food and energy, cooled in December with an annualized rate of 2.9%, beating consensus expectations. Core inflation was 3.2% on an annualized basis, its lowest level since March of 2021. While the inflation update didn't move markets much, it helped validate investors' optimism that the Fed policy has maintained economic growth while bringing down inflation. So, Um, You can check this out. I post this to the blog on Northbound Wealth's website, www.northboundwealth.com. I've got uh, a blog release that I send out every week. Uh, In it, uh, I've got Y charts. Love Y charts. Love what they're doing. It's awesome. The data they provide, the services they provide to financial advisors like myself. Um, But what I do is I look at that data and I communicate that to you guys. You can check it out on the blog, subscribe to that, or you can listen to this podcast and get it as well. So what does that mean for the Dow? The Dow Jones Industrial Average last week was up 0.65%. In the past month, the Dow is up 1.59%. Year to date, trailing year to date, uh, this year 1.2%. And the trailing one-year return for the Dow is up 14.69%. The MSCI EFA index for the week was up 2%. Trailing one month is 57 basis points or 0.57%. For year-to-date trailing, it's down 0.56%. And one-year trailing uh, is up 9.14%. So not bad, not bad. But compared to the next two indexes, not even close. So the next index we'll talk about, and I'll talk about every week, is the NASDAQ. So the NASDAQ uh, trailing five days, uh, looks like we're up 0.94%. The one month trailing uh, return is 2.56%. Year to date, we're up 2.98%. And then uh, one year trailing up 35.37%. So quite a recovery in the NASDAQ heavy like techs, tech sector 
uh, after a hard uh, negative year in 2022. Okay, next, S&P 500. The trailing five-day is up 1.06%. The trailing one month is 2.54% to the positive. Year to date or trailing, which would be this just this year's up 2.62%. Uh, and then uh, the one year trailing number for the SP 500 up 22.43%. Excellent, excellent. Now, on to the 10 year treasury note. So, a little bit about the fixed income space. Now, in the three month T bill, treasury bills, three month, six month, nine month, one year, two year, you're, you're basically up uh, from about 4.88% to 5.3%, depending on which duration you pick. The shorter duration of three months is up about 5.2 to 5.3%. And then the the what I saw the other day last week was you're looking at like a, a, a one to two year around, you know, 4.8, 4 4.7, 4.8%. 4 you jump out to the 10 year and it drops down, uh, and I'll quote this, uh, as of one twenty six. 24, uh, you're at 4.15 percent. Um, so that's down from a five percent print that was hap that happened last summer, like towards the er late end of the summer. So one month ago, the ten-year Treasury note was 3.89 percent. Three months ago, it was at 4.86 percent, and then one year ago today, basically 3.49 percent. So we're up from last year at 4.15 percent today. So that's, uh, or as of the 26th Friday, I guess. So the sources again, Y charts, um, data as of January 27th, weekly performance is measured basically from Monday, January 22nd to Friday, January 26th. So that's what I like to quote on a weekly to weekly basis. I won't go into this much detail on future podcasts, but I do want to kind of put that out there. Let me go through some of the definitions on what you see on the blog on the site that's printed, we've got ROC five is equal to the rate of change in the index for the previous five trading days. So uh, you see that rate of change in a uh, level of indication of as to momentum and the way things are trending. Um, also, uh, the TR, if you see it on the website, on the blog piece, uh, TR represents total return for the index, which includes any dividends as well as any other cash distributions during the period. And then uh, sometimes you'll see the treasury note yield is ex expressed in basis points. So if you hear basis points or guys like me sometimes say BIPs, I'll try to convert that to a percentage for better understanding by the layman. So moving on, earnings season feeds FOMO. Anybody know what FOMO is? The fear of missing out. That's what that means. The market digested Q4 earnings news from some of the largest companies with enthusiasm feeling like FOMO, the fear of missing out drove much investor sentiment and seemed to build market momentum. While the enthusiasm for AI continues to be one of the drivers of technology stock prices, the spotlight last week was on layoffs. Over 23,000 workers at 85 tech companies have lost their jobs this month. The market appears to be rewarding the cost-cutting measures with many tech giants repositioning themselves with AI in mind, and some analysts inferring that this emphasis on efficiency may encourage investors. So this week, key economic data, Tuesday, the FOMC meeting. You can see it all over the news. What, what, is, the, what is the Fed going to say? How are they going to position and guide going forward? And so that's a big deal right now in the markets for it does dictate kind of where things are at since the stock market is a discounting mechanism of what the future looks like. So they'll kind of look at six to eight months out and kind of uh, the, the market participants and players and investors in the market make decisions looking out ahead in the future. Wednesday, the FOMC announcement, Fed chair press conference. So what the Fed actually comes out of the with the meeting, like there's there's like... The, the minutes, and then there's what the Fed actually says. So you kind of have to watch both. Um, Thursday, jobless claims, ISM manufacturing index, Fed balance sheet. Friday, employment situation report. Always good to get reads on sentiment indicators. So source of my data comes from Investors Business Daily, uh, Econo Day, Economic Calendar, 
Uh, and this today uh, was based on January 26, 2024. The Econo Day economic calendar lists upcoming U.S. economic data releases, including economic indicators, uh, the Federal Reserve policy meetings and speaking engagements of Federal Reserve officials. And uh, my content is developed from sources believed to be providing accurate information. The forecasts or forward-looking statements are based on assumptions that may not materialize. So the forecasts are also subject to revision. And obviously, we're going to talk about a lot of this stuff throughout the year as we go. Um, this week, companies reporting earnings. I like to talk about notable companies. Uh, Tuesday, Microsoft, that's a big one. Alphabet, another big one. Uh, UPS, Starbucks, they kind of give us a read as to what's going on out there and how the holiday season wrapped up uh, for uh, Q4 of last year. Uh, Wednesday, MasterCard, yeah, spending, let's check it out. Boeing, man, do they have a lot to address uh, hopefully they can figure out the management uh, situation. Hopefully they can just like fire everybody and then rehire a bunch of new people that have a new view and will actually have quality controls, I guess. Uh, ADP, uh, automatic data processing. Thursday, Apple, Amazon, Meta, Merck. Gosh, it's a big week. Friday, ExxonMobil, Bristol Myers. So I'm excited to talk about uh, earnings, the result of earnings, um, and talk about different companies and also what we own, what we don't own, what we like, what we don't like, and then also talk about the charts and where those are trading. And the source of, uh, this, uh, data usually comes from Zach's. I've got a subscription to multiple sources and, uh, you know, companies mentioned, uh, there it's informal. It should uh, not be considered as a solicitation or purchase or sale of securities. Investing involves risks and investment decisions should be based on your own goals, time horizon, and tolerance for risk. The return of principal value of investments will fluctuate as market conditions change. When sold, investments may be worth more or less than their original cost. Companies may reschedule when they report earnings without notice. So we may not always get those earnings calls that we think. All right. And then usually what I try to do is go through a tax tip. So couples who work together tax together. Uh, as more households decide to start a business, many couples learn about the tax responsibilities related to such businesses. Here are some of the things to consider when working together. You should establish whether you have a partnership business in which both spouses have an equal say in business affairs, services, and capital, or an employee-employer relationship with one spouse substantially controlling the management decisions. These relationships involve different tax situations. More than that, they also involve many different dynamics that you have to consider when you work together um, and are married. Uh, if an employee-employer relationship exists, the second spouse employee may be subject to income, Social Security, and Medicare tax. Um, if there's a partnership relationship, you may need to report the business income on a form 1065 U.S. return of partnership income. And again, this information is not intended to be a substitute for specific individualized tax advice. We suggest you discuss your specific tax issues with a qualified tax professional. And this tip was adapted from irs.gov. I also include some health tips and some cool just non-financial things on the blog, on the website. So go check that out. Um, I'm not going to go over that here because we got a lot of other stuff to cover and I'm going to dive into the stock market, where the levels are at, um, how we're trading, looking at the Dow, the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange, uh, and the SP 500. So stay tuned. Hey everyone, this is Brent Foster with your technical analysis spotlight. Uh, what I do like to do from time to time is go through the charts and take a look at uh, certain indexes. S&P 500 is what I'm looking at. Um, let's see, I've got a dollar sign XPX on stock charts where I am a member. Love stock charts. They do a great job with uh, putting together data and information and a platform for us to do stock and charting analysis. I also like Y charts. So either platform does a great job. Uh, if you're at home, you could check out Yahoo Finance. 
you can check out a multitude of different platforms to take a look at uh, uh, stocks. Uh, my clients who custody their assets at Charles Schwab, they can go to Schwab and the website and take a look at some charts as well. What I have pulled up here is the S&P 500. I've got uh, today's chart. Looks like we have a positive move. We're trading about 48.95 on the S&P 500. And uh, that's that's awesome. Our high was like 49.06. We kind of traded down to 48.81. And then we're back up to 48.95 today. That, that happened over the past, oh, five days, five, six trading days. So definitely upward momentum, definitely in a bull market trend. We're trading uh, above the 50 day moving average, we're trading well above the 200 day moving average. The 50 day moving average, it, simple moving average is trading around 4,694. So we're a couple hundred points above that. And then the 200 day is sitting at 4,426 and change. And both are trending up. Um, I've got uh, uh, relative strength indicators and uh, full, full stochastics, advanced declines, uh, all looking pretty favorable. Um, we're getting pretty close and have been to some overbought conditions, uh, but that's what happens when we have an impulse move to the upside. Um, we have had a pivot from a bear market to a bull market. You can go all the way back to the all time, last all time highs we had was January of 2022. And then here we go. We we had basically an all-time high just last week. And uh, we're continuing that trend this week. And so that's good. That's good uh, for investors who have been invested in the market. And also it's kind of nice when you have treasuries paying as much as they, they are. So you can kind of have barbell the approach, figure out what your risk tolerance is, and see if you want to participate in that. Frankly, I'm looking for uh, and hoping for a bit of a pullback, a bit of a consolidation here uh, to look to to add more uh, risk to portfolios, but I'm not going to be uh, buying at all-time highs consistently. Uh, I'm going to wait for a bit of a pullback. So patience is warranted in my personal and humble opinion. Uh, if I look at the monthly chart as well, the long-term trend is intact. We're going back to 2022 in October, we hit lows. So literally we went from 48.18 into December of 2021, very beginning days of 2022. We went from 48.18 all the way down to 34.91 as an intraday bottom in October of 2022, and then from 39.41 all the way up to 49.06. Um, we did have a bit of a sell-off along the way, so we rallied all the way from that bottom to 46.07 uh, back in July, and then from there we sold off into October to 41.03, so a 500-point decline, and then now we're back up to 49.06. It's incredible. It's uh you know, climbing the wall of worry. A lot of people have been worried about this market. There's plenty of headwinds, plenty of reasons why you shouldn't participate. Um, and uh, fear can be a greater emotion. I mean, uh, if you talk about fear or you talk about negative things, people uh, tend to focus on them because fear is a greater emotion. It makes you focus on it. And uh, frankly, people get advertisers and the like, news media and outlets, uh, get more attention if they talk about everything that's negative. If you talk about what's positive more than you talk about what's negative, people tend not to tune in because why would they? Everything's going well, right? People get attracted behaviorally to things that are negative. So um, I'd like to say that uh, uh, the technical analysis and charting analysis uh, cuts through a lot of the a lot of that noise and uh, and and. Uh, removes at least some of the bias that we all have. We all have biases. So understanding that, staying objective, looking at both sides, uh, using rational thought and thinking, checking yourself when you get too greedy or too optimistic or too bearish or too negative. So uh, neither one is good. Uh, so understanding how human behavior works is just as important um, as doing the technical and fundamental analysis it needs to make portfolio management decisions, trading decisions, and things like that.
All right, I'm going to jump over to the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. So what I got pulled up here, daily chart looking good, gapping up a bit. Uh, I mean, we're kind of separating back in November and December. We had a bit of a, a testing of that 200 day, but we've really kind of separated and are gapped up uh, from 32,000 at a bottom in uh, at the end of October, all the way to 38,000. Uh, on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, 38,151 as of uh, this morning. Uh, the 50-day moving average is at 36,862, so, so so a few thousand points below that. And then even further down is the 200-day average moving average at three uh, 34,760, so a, a 4,000 point gap. So you're seeing the S&P 500 as well as the Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, gapping up, breaking out, and uh, hitting fresh and new all-time highs, and uh, holding those positions, not immediately selling off. Uh, I think that broadening out of uh, of buying other than the Magnificent Seven, even though they carry the greater significance of weighting in the S&P 500, I think is also helping rise the tide. A rising tide lifts all boats. So moving uh, the equity markets, ratcheting up a bit higher. Uh, now let's jump over and check out the NASDAQ. I always like to go over the NASDAQ. It's a lot of fun. Um, the NASDAQ, here we go. Um, we are trading on a daily chart uh, at, let's see, intraday view, 15,481. Uh, we were at 15,491 on the intraday. So still holding holding in there well. The high that it put in, or at least in 2022, was 15,901 uh, at the very end or very beginning of 2022. So we went from 15,901 down to the bottom in October of 2022 to 10,088 and change. Had a rally that in an impulse wave that went up to 1,446 uh, by July, which is a significant a 4,000 point move. And then we had a, a consolidation, a correction back down to 12,543 back in uh, October of 2000, October, November of 2023. And then from there, it hasn't looked back. And we went from 12,543 up to 15,629. Um, and now we're sitting at 15,481. So some nice impulse moves to the upside. Uh, I think that uh, it won't be long before we see that 15,901 number taken out. Uh, then we'll have all three major indexes uh, hitting new fresh all-time highs. Um, and I think that'll be a pretty significant. Uh, and I think that might happen uh, but we don't know. We have to see big tech earnings this week. There's a reason why I'm talking about technology a little bit is because there's a lot going on. And so next week's podcast will review, uh, how earnings played out for some of these big tech companies. But I love, I love the view. Um, I love what I see. I like it when everybody's, uh, making money, moving up higher. Uh, this is good. Uh, but also we have to be cautious and understand what the risks are that may lie ahead that we're likely to get some sort of consolidation, but it doesn't mean to bail. It just means to understand what your what your goals and objectives are, what your strategy is going to be going forward over the next one, three, and five years out to 10 years. If you have a long time horizon, um, the, it's a good sign that we're reversing course and uh, from, a, from a bear market in 2022 and uh, in 23, and then reversing that. Uh, and here we go. So it's an election year. We'll talk about that as we get closer to the election. History, though, has shown that that uh, in the year of of elections that the market does pretty well. It actually is a good time to be invested. So keep that in mind, regardless of what political party you are in. OK, um, the VIX, it's crazy. Fear gauge, fear index. It's up a little bit today of 4.3%, but it's trading around 13.83. So um, not a whole lot of fear. When there's a lot of selling, when there's a lot of fear maybe priced into the future of the market, you'll see the VIX spike up. And a VIX at 13.83 basically signals like as an indicator, it doesn't mean any. It doesn't mean that it means basically things are fine. Um, there's not a whole lot of... Um, 
of fear out there. Now it's creeping up a bit. Um, it's interesting today, uh, or over the weekend, we had attacks in Jordan that killed three U S service members, um, and injured like 34. Uh, that's what I saw in Bloomberg this morning and, uh, prayers, thoughts and prayers go out to the service members, uh, affected and the families affected by that. And, uh, it's the attack was, uh, engaged by Iranian back, uh, militants. And I, I pray that, uh, that, uh, that justice is done in that, in that matter. Uh, but I could see where that could affect the markets because it marks potentially an ex- escalation of, uh, the Israeli Hamas, uh, war in Gaza, and then also our involvement, uh, in the Red Sea and the rest of it. And all of that type of stuff does affect the markets. And, uh, we pay attention to that, uh, to geopolitical issues and situations because they may impact, our investment strategy and we may have to make adjustments. So we follow a lot of that data and, and news coming out of, of those areas. Um, let's see. So there cryptocurrency, uh, Bitcoin's trading at 41,943. I'm going to start quoting that more. Ethereum's at 2,243. The reason why I'll talk about Bitcoin a bit more is because, uh, recently, uh, just the last week or two, there's been big developments in the Bitcoin space where the SEC approved a spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund. And so that means when you uh, buy a- an exchange traded fund, like ticker symbol IBIT, uh, that means that your money is going into uh, uh, Bitcoin, spot Bitcoin um, itself. And so uh, there's a lot of new developments coming out about that and a lot of new information and education. And so I'm going to start adding it to quoting. Um, I'm likely to add uh, that as well as talking a bit more about bonds. Um, not so much about commodities. Gold and silver are are things that and copper and oil and natural gas, gasoline and corn are things people like to talk about too. Um, but I won't get into it too much there. Uh, what's most important to me is the stock market and equities and and, and bonds and fixed income. And then um, I will talk about crypto because it's kind of like the new generation and then a bit about commodities here and there. All right. For those of you who haven't heard the podcast, welcome to the show. And I'm, this is kind of the format. I'll talk a little bit about the markets, kind of cover some topical areas. Then I'll dive into technical analysis. And then usually what I'll do if I have more time and I try to keep this very short, uh, 20, 30 minutes at most. But then if I have time, I'll talk about financial planning matters like the SECURE Act or maybe uh, investing in certain vehicles like Roth IRAs or traditional IRAs or retirement or retiring early or Social Security or tax implications of rule changes or law changes and stuff like that. So uh, estate planning, sometimes I'll cover things regarding trusts and estates, uh, different aspects of wealth management. So, um, yeah, I, I appreciate all of you listeners. I appreciate what you're doing, uh, out there in saving and investing and just thank you for listening to the show and I'll talk to you guys next week. Have a great week and weekend. Take care.